And, and then, of course, there's other things. There's politics. There's the new governor comes in or the new, um, uh, you know, uh, the, new, the new guys come into the Senate and they look at it and go, why are we giving money to film programs and we could be giving it to, to schools and we could be giving, which I understand. And, um, and so the politics change and that's how these states uh, uh, start to change. But Louisiana has been pretty consistent and it looks like they're going to keep that program in place for at least another four years, which means that pretty much you know, 80% of independent films that are looking that are above the budgets of five million dollars or more will be trying to look at Louisiana as a, as a place to shoot. Well, and a follow up, and maybe Sean, you can speak to this: is with the barrier to entry lowered for film production, you know, anyone can pick up a camera and a tripod and make a movie now. I, I would assume that there's much more competition for this soft money. So, it, how do you navigate that? How do filmmakers actually try to? get a tax credit in Louisiana or, you know, well, Canada. Each, uh, I mean, Cassian knows this in, inside and out, but every state with every sort of incentive has different qualifications to it. Michigan, for a while, you'd have to submit, be approved, so they'd know what kind of check they had to write. Cassian talks about how producers were able to bump up their fees and above the line was able to be able, the uh, actors and, and producers and directors were able to get uh, incentive back on their money. Those, those programs tend to collapse because the big idea for all this stuff is that you're giving money to the local economy. In some cases, aggressive incentives let you take a percentage of the money you're spending on hotel rooms. They'll let you take part of the cost of the plywood you buy from Home Depot. Those incentives tend to collapse because you'll find that that money leaves the state quickly. The longest and most successful incentive in the world, at least according to the film office there, uh, is in BC, it's in Vancouver. Because it's based entirely on what you spend on local labor. And to get that money back, you have to submit paperwork proving that these people live in and pay taxes in that area. And you don't have to be pre-approved at all. So no matter what your budget level is, you just have to prove that you've employed someone in that area who's qualified, and they'll cut you a check for whatever. So you retroactively get reimbursed? Yeah, and that, that window, I mean, it's so exact. You can use a payroll company called Entertainment Partners, and they're fairly expensive. They're based, they started in Canada, and now they're all over the place. They know exactly how much you're paying labor on a half million dollar movie, on a ten million dollar movie, on a hundred million dollar movie. And they've already got the start work paperwork, so they've created a bank that will lend you the money based about, you know, 90% of what you've spent on your local labor because they're cutting the checks and they've already vetted that as, a, as a, an okay spend. So you don't have to be pre-approved or anything. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of stuff on the internet about the various different states and what incentives are available there. And so, you know, if you're thinking about shooting anywhere um, that 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 has a certain specific look, go on the internet and look and see whether that state has a program. And if they do, who's used it before, has it worked? Um, other other films that have actually gone successfully through that program. Uh, and then, of course, you know, you get back to the the question for us always of the line producers and whatever is. Is there any local crew that you can use there? Because if you're bringing everybody in, you're going to have a hard time qualifying them all. Yeah, mpaa.org has the full list of incentives by state. Right. Hmm. I, I mean, I'd like to jump in and take a step back, too, because I think that, <clears throat> again, being closer to this side of the audience and that side, I feel like the thing that needs to get said is that all these are great. And yes, you can research all these, and it's great to hear all these. But I think the point that everybody needs to take from these is that these individuals up here are successful because they're making these calculations. And these calculations are making a good movie doesn't make a profitable movie. Like, you will continue to be a successful producer if you make people money. And making a good movie does not necessarily make people money. The calculations that make people money are, what is the tax credit I'm going to get? Based on that tax credit, how much is going to go back into the budget? Okay, what is really the equity stake in the budget? Okay, what am I going to get from the foreign pre-sales based on this actor? What am I going to get from an MG from this you know, sales agent to go to distribute, like all those things get calculated in so that when you get offered $5 million to make a movie that should be made for $1 million, you as a producer can say, you know what, this should be made for $1 because I've done these calculations. I know where we're shooting it. I know what the tax credit is. I know how it can be monetized. And then if you're really smart, you know how to look beyond that and say like, well, you know what, if no sales agent wants this and no distributor wants this and I still need to make my investors their money back, here are the avenues I can do to do that. I have a part of my budget for a social media campaign that hits this target audience directly that I know watches these movies, the 400 extras in Iowa. I know how to reach them and get them in a theater and they're so excited to see it, they're each gonna pay $15 for it and they will pay back this movie even though they worked on it and I'll make my investors their money back. And you have to have that plan as a producer and like that to me 
is a way more important note to write down in your book than like what percentage you're going to get back in which thing. It's, it's about, that's why these guys are successful. They, they get a script, they read the script, and immediately those calculations are, okay, what level should this be made at that's fiscally responsible? 